The Hedgeless Horseman here. It's May 25, uh, 2023. Uh, volatile day. Uh, kind of. Uh, yeah, ve uh, very volatile day apparently, and uh, I know Nvidia was up, I think, 26%, and I think that was up like 25 in the aftermarket yesterday or something. So you're seeing all kinds of craziness uh, overall, and uh, of course, I mean, uh, to me, th this is uh, all noise. I mean, paper metals, what they're doing. I mean, everything is kind of dislocated uh, even if you kn knew where metals were gonna go you don't necessarily know what where miners are gonna go or anything like that and uh, there's a few things I would just like to point out which are kind of I would say self-explanatory but it's like people uh, get uh, well I think they have the wrong way of go going about things it's like does anybody know, anyone in the entire world know when a bottom is in, in a cyclical sector? Does anybody knew, did anybody know that this was the bottom? Absolutely not. Did anybody know that this was the bottom? I mean, that's, you can see the change intraday. Nope. Did anybody know that this was the bottom and it would be up, you know, 100% in, in just a few days after? Nope. Uh, like I talked about before, I mean, a lot of technical uh, uh, traders I think they were actually selling this it broke re uh, uh, broke this support etc so it's like you know you know it, it can all it can always go get worse I mean that's why people buy nobody would be buying up here unless they thought high can always go higher nobody would be sell selling down here if they didn't think well l uh, low can always get lower uh, that's the thing and and obviously the in interesting thing is that at this point in time, the last day of the uptrend is when the market is pricing in the lowest chance of a mean reversion happening. Up here, it's like, no, there's never going to be a mean reversion. Then the most brutal mean reversion ever happens. Same here. Uh, down here, this was pricing in that this sector is never going to turn around. And then you have, you know, probably the most epic rally in the last decades happen. So that's the funny thing. It's like when the mean reversion, oh, obviously uh, we, we know a few uh, common sense things by definition. Any additional day of an uptrend being, brings it one day closer to the mean reversion. Every additional down day brings it one day closer to the up next up leg. That's by definition. And of course that goes also back to my you know what I talked about if somebody starts to scream that hey this is the bottom buy and then he screams like that uh, 100 days straight or more than that actually like two, 200 days straight o obviously people will believe him less and less even though by definition without knowing anything else he should be believed more and more because one extra day is one day closer to the inevitable mean reversion but that's the interesting thing is like how in, in a matter of sense dumb this uh, market is and the sector is that up here uh, is priced in the lowest chance of a mean reversion and okay after the longest period of time of an uptrend has gone on so it makes absolutely no sense I mean it, it's maximally wrong when the uh, let's say implications of being wrong is ever higher because this is the highest point for well the biggest difference from here to here obviously uh, so in, in, in if this market was more rational uh, if <laughs> nobody well one shouldn't really want that but in that case you know it would go something like this because the market should be pricing in the fact that this sector always always since the dawn of time uh, does mean reversion big decline big rally big decline well pretty big rally uh big big rally big decline big rally big decline big rally big decline big rally big decline big, i mean you know huge decline huge rally huge decline huge rally that's going to happen forever this is a hundred years short 
there's no trend here that lasts forever. And yes, some are, you know, longer and larger. I mean, this just kept on plowing, plowing, etc. But like always also, a stock can only go to zero, but it can go up infinitely, theoretically. So that's also why it's like, like, uh, I think I've pointed out a few times, I am scared shitless of ever selling a low. I treat this sector, when we're this cheap, when we're this low, my main assumption is that the day can be in any day. Oh, the day, the low can be in, the lowest price point, and you'll never get a chance to buy this cheap again. I mean, it can happen quickly. I mean, take this, this lasted, well, I, I guess it touched... Uh, uh, touch this level here two times but still it's like two days after that you could never buy this low again until eight years later and I don't know if we'll be, we'll be buying this cheap anytime soon so you'll never in that case th this, is the, this was the best buy in the next eight years this was the next best buy in the next eight years so we know a few things uh, well we don't know when the bottom is in. Nobody knew that this was the bottom. Nobody knew that this was the bottom or this the bottom, this, 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 this. Or that this was the top, this was the top, this was the top. Nobody knows that. So, so, but everybody tries to, that's what everybody focuses on. When is this market bottoming? When is the top coming? Top coming, etc. I don't try to guess when. There are, only two things we do know. Uh, can one know that there will be a bottom? Absolutely, 100% guarantee. Unless we don't, we're not going to have a mining sector in the future. We know 100% of the time, uh, no trend will go down forever. This w won't. I mean, this is obviously a proxy, so Bear Creek. Anything could happen with that, but. For the sector overall, we know this trend won't go on forever. We know. We know every downtrend ends by definition because we know we have we're going to need a mining sector and nowadays people are well entire governments pentagon are talking about critical minerals so the fact that we need metals and more metals than ever before is a fact if we're going to have the same well if if we're going to have a a civilization and b if we're going to have the energy transition so it's like the junior sector is pricing in that there's a, f uh, again, it's like there's a high chance that there will not be a mean reversion, at least anytime soon. M maybe not in the last, in the next five years or something. That has not happened ever. So we know that downtrend cannot go on forever. Because we, uh, unless civilization is going away and the mining sector is going away. At a time when, every, when governments are talking increasingly about the necessity or how critical the mining sector is. So you can't make this up. This is by far, I mean, I remember buying into the 2015-16 low. Had no idea when the low was in. I, you know, knew that long afterwards. I mean, up here you can say, yeah, obviously this was the bottom. But it's not like it went up here and it's like, yeah, for sure it's not going to go lower. No, there's been many, many, many f false rallies. I just knew that it was extremely cheap, cheapest levels. People were saying that, hey, you know, juniors haven't been this cheap since, you know, this kind of time. That was all I needed to know. Okay, I'm sitting at a... Uh, I, I'm, I'm, be, I'm able to buy juniors at a historically undervalued level. And that's where we're at right now. So f for me, this is not even a... Uh, I mean, this is a no-brainer. I'm fully invested, buy more every month. Because what I do know is that there will be a bottom and that can I have a sense of what will happen after? Absolutely. Uh, the lower and cheaper something gets, uh, the more and more risk is to the upside. The next big move in the junior sector is not going to be down, it's going to be up. That's, that's what my focus is on. The next big move. And it's the next big moves that 
forgive a lot of sins. But at the same time, you have polls running right now uh, by disgruntled speculators, investors. It's like uh, that they think this is the worst sector ever. So on that point, a uh, few other things that is like pretty common sense. This is past. This has happened. Has this uh, the the sector has sucked. Here the sector has never sucked this much in a long time. Here the sector never sucked that much in a long time. And here it uh, hadn't sucked more, uh, you know, in the last two years pretty much. We know what has happened, but that is absolutely worthless. Except for telling us something about if the sector will suck. This is the only thing. <laughs> Basically, this is the past. Investing is all about the future. And we know that Pierre Lassonde said this is the easiest sector in the world. For the only reason that it go, goes down. Let's see if I... Uh, well, that it goes up and down a lot. That is his only reasoning. That's what he's saying when, you li when he said that. The reason why this is an easy sector is because it goes down and up a lot. Only reason. Simple reason. Goes up a lot, down a lot, up a lot, down a lot. Now it's gone down a lot. Past has sucked. Does the sector sucks? I love this sector. Well, I, 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 w I shouldn't say love it. It's like, if you can, if you can stand... If you have the mental fortitude to not make it complicated and just buy this sector for however long it is cheap, you're going to make money. The odds are you're going to make money. You can make a lot of money. My portfolio went down 50% and up from the bottom 500%. Not from skills, not superior stock picking, but I was in it. I was in it to win it. I was in. I I knew what the next big move where that was going to go. And it was not going to be down from here. It was going to be up. I know where the next big move from here is. So it's totally irrelevant the fact that it has sucked. That's what everybody's clouding. I mean, that's why people do polls right now. They think this sector sucks because it has sucked. I think this sector is great right now because it has sucked. Because the next big move is here. And this is not one of those sectors where it's like when the mean reversion happens, it's it just goes, you know, up 30 percent. Absolute crap, you know, shit goes. Went up hundreds of percent here, hundreds of percent here. And yes, in a sense, this sector sucks because its mining business is so hard. That doesn't change the fact that companies that probably are worth zero on a long enough timeline, there's a bunch of them, 90% plus, they still go up hundreds of percent. And even good companies that are doing good work go down 50% or more. Actually, I don't have the short up now, but it's like if you look at the Great Bear short, which was a huge success story over time, there were more sideways and down periods in Great Bear than there were clear up rallies. So even if even in one of the biggest success stories in the gold space in you know last 10 years if you just look at the short price uh, and look at the trends etc uh, majority of the time it was sideways or down think about that and that's what I, why I keep saying this is like 80% of the time this sector sucks and then you have these spikes look at the downtrend how long uh, of a time that lasted versus this short uptrend this was a two-year downtrend and yes it was zigzagging didn't really get going that much but it's like and obviously this was a big cascade but it's like this was a move of hundreds of percent in this short time period and here you have i mean this move here was like one point 
Yeah, two hundred percent. So that that's what you ha you have to understand that you have to be comfortable knowing you shouldn't be surprised that this sector sucks a lot of the time. You should expect it. That should be as natural as the sun coming up. That most of the time this will be uh, frustrating price action because history has taught us. I mean, look at I mean how concentrated the rallies can can be. Chuf, chuf. It's like and sometimes you have you know trending and some ups and downs and yada yada. But it's like a lot of the time it's just and this is over years. But still, if you just had a, I don't know, a computer program that said start buying any time this sector is down 50% and then just, if it's down 60, you buy a lot more. If it's down 70, you buy a lot more. If it's, you know, you know where I'm going with this, which would be translated to a trading sardines. Like, let's say you have this as the mean reversion. Uh... Yeah, like the mean, whatever. It's like, and I've shown this before. It's like, if you just in Bear Creek, if you bought at this level and only at this level, within like two years, you would always had a 200% return or something like that. And any buy at lower levels was never a mistake, but an even better buy. Uh, but it, it's just so hard to get people to, I mean, grasp the simplicity of this sector. Because everybody wants to explain every move. Oh, there's an institution selling, or there's such like, you have no idea why people are selling right now, but it sure is hell. Now, for the high quality juniors, there's nobody selling right now, and, you know, with a rational, uh, by a rational choice. Like, I think this is a. Uh, poor buy or this is expensive the high quality juniors right now almost i think there's a above 95 percent chance that they are very very cheap probably 50 percent uh you know 50 percent discount to you know true value if nobody knows the exact true value but it's like yeah i, I think so i think there's some Juniors out there that are absolutely, I mean, you, you have to be brain dead to consider them expensive. Then it is very hard to be making mistakes. And it's like, I, I get, you know, a ton of, I mean, most people don't agree with me. I mean, that's one thing I, you know, figured out. It's like, people cannot fathom why I can be bullish, you know, super bullish for over a year now. Why I'm just buying and buying and buying. To me, it's very obvious why you should be buying. It's like, there's no surgical about this. Again, this, <laughs> this sector goes down 80% and up hundreds of percent. You don't need to be in at the bottom. Again, if you just bought the black line, I mean, let, let's say... Let's say it goes like something like this. Every single, I'm assuming from, well, even from here, it's like if it goes up to four, it's like, well, at least, yeah, at least from the black line. It's like even in a trading sardine, from the black line, even if it took, what, like two, three years, let's say you're up 200%. I mean, that's superb returns for a, that kind of a period. And the only the real reason why people cannot afford to have you know I was gonna say big paper losses is because they never buy cheap. I don't know how many people are pointing out right now that juniors suck and this junior sector sucks, etc. While we have a billionaire like Pierre Lassonde who says it's the easiest sector in the world because it always goes from sucking to rallying and then sucking to rallying and I know what my long-term results are from and I'm, I'm fully invested I cannot afford to sell this cheap my assumption is that since we're at 
nosebleed uh, uh, levels in terms of cheapness. I assume that the more the the the, the cheapest price we're going to see in the next years might happen anytime. Anytime. That's my assumption. Because one day is going to be the last day, and then you're never going to be able to buy cheaper. If you just missed, uh, how long is this? Like, it's like a month. Oh wait, what is? Okay. Okay, a month later, it's already up here. That's already a hundred percent return. So if you snoozed on this one, or it's like, ah, I think it's gonna go lower, then it jumped. You're you're never getting these prices back uh, uh, until the next eight years later. We know the next big move is up, not down, because we know there's gonna uh, the mining sector is gonna be around. And of course, it's like ninety percent of people are bearish right now. It's like a uh, the mining Twitter is almost dead quiet. Almost dead quiet. I mean, think about where we are. We're down here. And if, I mean, some might disagree that oh, this is not a good proxy, etc. Well, this is the proxy I use. So we're down here. When on earth would you not, when would you be bullish if you're not bullish now? Up here, you would see polls about how good this sector is. Up here, you would have polls saying, you know, uh, how, how much do we love this mining sector? 100%, 1000% or 10,000%. Because the past was great. When the past sucks, the future is great. When the past is great the future sucks that's as simple as that uh, and it's like yeah this was a day ago or so it's like yeah you see gold price paper gold price started to uh, fall it's like okay I went, went out on a walk or something looked uh, came back looks like retraced the whole movement but every single day this goes on uh, like I said before the pain is going up exponentially. It's much easier. People can cope with uh, a day or two of downside. Well, let's take here. I mean, they can cope with this. For every additional downside now, uh, people are, you know, more and more people will lose their minds and get convinced that for the first time ever, this sector will not do a huge mean reversion. It is, I mean, it, it, if, you, if you allow this sector to be simple, it's, it's very simple. And that's the funny part is like, the, the, the one liner you hear all the time is buy low, sell high. S sounds simple enough. Nobody actually does that. Everybody sells low because it can always go lower and they buy high because it can always go higher. That's how people work in reality. Up here, when I remember saying to my brother, it's like printing money. I knew, you know, I, my gut feeling was that's like okay i know we're closer to a top you know obviously closer to a top than a bottom because if you feel like you're printing money right now on paper sentiment is high there's too much too many momentum traders too too much dumb money etc we're way closer to a top than a bottom and then this happened i didn't know i did had no idea the day of the top that it's like yeah this is the top but a new sentiment was high and I remember, you know, I remember remembering the thing like, okay, now it's, now it's too easy. I, I, I know what happens after it's too easy. The gains come too easy. 
that's when we're close to our top. I, I had no idea it was going to be this long of a bear market, but that's uh, what happened. But if I, of course, can afford huge drawdowns because I'm also always fully invested at the bottom tick. If this was the bottom tick, I was fully invested here. If this is the bottom tick, I'll be fully invested here. If this is the bottom tick, I'll be fully invested here. I'm after the I'm after the next big move higher. The past has sucked, so the future is bright. Uh, and I'm you know doing other stuff because I am going crazy just seeing how long this no brainer persists. It is absolute there is no doubt in my mind. It there shouldn't be a doubt in anyone's mind uh, about what to do here. It cannot get more obvious that we're in a huge buy zone for juniors overall. I don't care what the Fed does. I don't care what the FOMC does. I don't care about the debt ceiling. I don't care about the paper melts. I don't care any about, uh, about that at all. I care about if the juniors are cheap and where the next move in the juniors. Have more pe ha has the majority of we cans, let's say, sold out? Are the juniors pricing in absolutely ridiculous levels for their, the assets they have? Yes. Can ridiculous get even more ridiculous? Of course, always. But that's not where the big move is. If this is the downside, that the extreme can get more extreme, and this is the reward side, so th this is like the paper risk, because again, we know no trend lasts forever. Every single downtrend in the mining sector turns around. So whatever happens in a downtrend, that's a paper loss. So we're risking a paper loss for a big paper gain. If we're like, yeah, I'm not going to buy here, I'm going to sell. I have no idea how people have cash. I thought this here we were already getting really, really cheap. And like I said a bunch of times, I thought that, hey, this looked like the start of the next uptrend. We obviously know that that wasn't, but all that, all these fake breakouts, I say, it just exhausts people. So to keep myself sane, I'm focusing on stuff because this is a no-brainer. I know exactly what I'm. My the on, my only strategy now is well, I'm typically fully invested even at tops, but it's like this is a no-brainer. Absolute no brainer. The only the only way to play a mean reversion is to wait for the mean reversion. So I only I know by definition that the only thing that makes sense right now is to make wait for the big move, which is uh, to uh, to the upside. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to start. I don't know from what level it's going to start. I just know it's going to happen. I just know it's going to happen. Hundred percent sure it's locked in. We're going to have a mining sector in ten years, so we know this downtrend will not continue forever and it, and I assume it can bottom any time or this might be the bottom but it's like I'm treating this as a bottom can be in at any point in time and when this mean reversion is played out you're gonna be happy you bought this low even if it sucked for a period of time you would be happy up here that you bought here for the time being yes it went down more but that's not what kills people. What kills people is they sell sell out and not buy. Because like I also talked about, there's a huge difference between holding, buying and selling. Orders of magnitude difference. Holding is a lot better than selling, but buying is a lot better than holding. That's how it is. As always, people think that uh, when share price goes down, they think that risk goes up, etc. But typically, uncertainty is the same because assuming nothing has changed for a project, 
the uncertainty of merits and, and merit of that project is unchanged. Price risk is going down. The risk reward is going higher. And I showed the Patriot Better Metal short where it's like within the span of like one to one and a half month, thanks to the price volatility, Patriot went from a 20 bagger to a 75 4 bagger and went from a 3.5 bagger to an 8 bagger. Yada, yada, yada. And it's like, here we have become. I've always told people there's nobody who can really pick the market on a short term or intermediate term basis. You can't told the uh, FT. Uh, maybe I made a mistake of not adhering to my own advice in recent years. Again, this a short like this suggests nothing about the short term. Absolutely nothing about next uh, tomorrow, next week. Next month, maybe even, I mean, sometimes not even next year. But it says everything about the inevitable move, the long-term move. So it's, it's super unsexy. You don't sit with four screens. You don't look at Fed. You don't try to guess what the Fed is going to do. Rates are going to go, etc. All you have, all you, the only way to play this is to buy low, keep buying low, as low as possible, and then wait and wait and wait. If it drags on longer, you'll buy more and then make even more money. If this keeps you know, get, getting lower, you know, I'm buying more and I'm going to make even more money. Short-term pain for a bigger, longer-term gain. If you're not willing to do that trade, I mean, it's like, I, I, I like to think that... Uh, I like to think that I'm bored out of my mind right now, okay? And the and the reward for boredom or the the price of very good long-term results is boredom. So I'm focusing, you know, trying to focus on other stuff. It's like I know I have nothing else to do than wait. If I did nothing in my portfolio, I think I'm going to be up a lot in the next few years. A lot. Without doing a single trade. I could perhaps make that even better by uh, doing even more due diligence and watch out for, you know, volatility. That you have an unchanged story. All of a sudden, somebody needs money. They sell, sell it down 20%. And that's 20%. Uh, it's like here. Yeah, this was a 16% uh, down uh, intraday uh, fall in price. What what did hap uh, What happened with the future returns? Went from 300 to like 400. 100% extra future return thanks to a uh, drop in price, which might have lasted, who knows, an hour. A hundred percent extra return from a, a intraday price drop. It's just incredible. Hundred percent. That's years worth of returns. That was gifted to somebody in an unchanged story. I'm a, even, you know, Bear Creek didn't even change during that period of time. Price went down sixty percent. No news out. I'm assuming. That's the thing. Price changes every single day of uh, any trading day and within the day price changes all the time value typically only changes during a news release the long-term value of a company an update on the assets we have found something we have not found something it looks to be growing whatever news changes value price changes every day So if you have something that is fixed value and price just goes down, obviously it you know, becomes a better buy. And it's like, if we just look, take Bear Creek, but let's pretend this is a exploration company, something like that. Let's say this is the blue sky potential. Let's say this is a single asset junior with, uh, yeah, single asset, single project. Let's say this is the blue sky potential of, long-term blue sky potential of, of that one target or project when this sector is hot and expensive meaning there's people that are buying a lot much m m many more buyers than sellers this is the upside potential 
and let's say they haven't you know let, let's say they haven't uh, i was gonna say they risked it a lot so the implied value might be down here then it's hugely overvalued and even if you're right even if blue sky the blue sky scenario pans up this is all you're getting but the 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 risk is like uh, all the way from here down to here or if it you know a absolutely becomes nothing worth uh, of value i mean then it's you know all the way to zero so obviously the risk reward is pretty goddamn poor up here and you need to be very sure that blue sky is going to play play out because this is all you're playing for to the upside now we're down here okay say let's say this is another junior but the price level is down here let's say this junior has three projects so this is what is priced in. Let's say they have, the th they have three kicks at the can. Let's say the potential in their flagship project is all the way up here. That is a huge possible reward waiting. D do you need for that to happen? Obviously not. Let's say, you know, if that were to happen, let's say you would get a 844% return. Then you don't need a high confidence uh, that Blue Sky will pan out. But that's not enough. They have two additional projects. Any of, if any of these ones work and let's say they hit close to Blue Sky. So you have three kicks at the can and you're starting off from this level. Can you? I mean imagine the enormous difference in risk reward. Buying cheap multi-asseted let's say juniors yeah there are dirt cheap not not pricing in even let's say they're pricing a 10 percent chance that the flagship project will work out but they have three kicks they have three cans to kick and any of them could be a company maker if you stack up the reward because obviously all three could work out stack up the upside risk across these three projects relative to the price level versus th this expensive one project junior here which might have a value that's down here you know risk adjusted value price is already up here so you're taking this as a speculative premium and if blue sky happens this is all you're gonna make 50% and you're risking let's say at least like on a risk adjusted basis you're risking 55% and if nothing uh, if they don't really do anything let's say it doesn't go bankrupt but down 90% so you're risking a 90% decline to get a possible 50% upside because it's so, so much is priced in already think about what a shitty bet that is now there's absolute i mean you you can almost not believe it how cheap some of this these high quality juniors are i mean m many of these juniors have like you know a mid-tier or a major invested in them and and maybe they're the, the, it's a discovery already and they're pricing in like i don't know one in i don't know five percent that they're gonna have something that's gonna be worth anything it's just crazy and when they have multiple assets it's just yeah it's it's incredible how i mean again it's like you cannot even compare these cases they are absolute orders of magnitude apart in terms of risk reward here you have a you know cumulative upside potential of like 850 plus 300 plus 700 1850 percent upside return and sure if things go to absolute shit let's say you 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 have a from these levels like 70 percent downside here you have like 50 percent upside not 1850 50 percent upside and 90 percent downside And you have three, if one of these works out, you, you'll have a multi-bagger. If this only project comes to, you know, uh, plays out to blue sky potential, then you'll have, you know, 50% upside. I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely insane how, how 
loaded the dice with a lot of this these juniors. It's like, you know, coming from a poker background, it's just surreal and it drives me absolutely crazy that there are not enough people, retail investors with money to keep this sector even fairly priced at all. If you gave me, I don't know, it's like, give me double the amount of capital I already have invested, I would be plowing that in tomorrow. There's no way I would let some of these juniors get this this cheap. I would be putting in a perma bid, again, assuming I have capital, way higher than they are right now. Because the bets are absolutely insane. You will never see the kind of bets. I mean, Aces pales in comparison to some of the bets you can find in this junior sector right now. Still, now is the time people are making polls about when are you going to get out of this shitty sector. It's like you have a table in front of you where there's aces lying around everywhere. You can buy in at any time. Can buy in. To, let's say you can sit down at a poker table. You're just going to get handled, uh, handed aces and your opponents are dog shit. They've been playing poker for an hour. You would sit at that table every single day of the week for as long as possible. But given how irrational we are as investors and speculators, especially in, uh, for some reason it's even worse in this volatile sector, nobody sees it that way. People think that when the bets are so... When there are such obscenely positive expected value bets out there, when there's like you, you cannot believe how good the bets are. I mean, you you pay the price of playing a hand, which is the market cap, and it's like you can. I mean, in poker, if you're you know against one opponent, you can make a hundred percent. In this sector, you can make hundreds of percent. So it's like you're you're paying for one hand, and you're getting multi. You know, if you win, you're getting multiples. Yet, uh, yet now is the time when <laughs> people think that this th this sector sucks. This sector has never, perhaps, been better since I invested. I see aces all over the place, and more than aces, aces with. Uh, where you win multiples of the pot if you win, let's say. It is absolutely incredible. The very fact that we are down here and get absolutely insane risk-reward opportunities, the bang for the buck on our money right now is absolutely bonkers compared to up here. But this is when people say the sector sucks. Jesus Christ, you have it the total other way around. This is when the bets are, on average, pretty, uh, pretty goddamn shit. You, you kind of need Blue Sky to play out to make material money from this uh, sentiment level here. Down here, it's like, forget about it. If you write on, I don't know, 1 in 10 or something, and you hold it long enough. When we reach the next sentiment high and you have a success story, Jesus, they, they can... Uh, I mean, again, just look at Patriot Battle Medals. At the low, like a year ago, it went up 75, 74 times when Blue Sky uh, played out. It's not like, you know, every single company is going to find a Corvette deposit, but it's like... It went up 74 times from that bottom. You can look at Great Bear. Look at the difference in, in you know, what the ret ending returns were if you bought that at the 2020 flush. Because even Great Bear went down 50%. The future returns 
just went up expo I mean, in a ridiculous way. I mean, one month earlier, maybe you've got, an, uh, I don't know, 200% return. All of a sudden, it goes down 50% in price. And your future returns might be 1,000%. Same story, nothing changed. But the price, the price to play the hand just went down 50%. So the risk reward just, yeah, I mean, went absolute batshit crazy. So in, in the case of, you know, Patriot, for example, I mean, if you write 174 bagger, you need to be right one out of 74 to have your portfolio be neutral, assuming you could write it for so long. So you can just, you can just think about what some of the growth companies where they might be trading at if they have an intact growth story right now and let's say they're dirt cheap imagine what they might be trading at if you give them two years and let's say one out of three actually keeps on growing the project and we hit the sentiment high so if they grow the the value by 200 percent and then you get a two three hundred percent sentiment kicker on top of that at the next sentiment high I mean, it's like, you know, I don't know, 1,000%. It's just absolutely incredible the kind of bets we're getting down here. I have, I, again, I have no idea how people can ha have dry powder. But that's my way of playing it. Uh, I, I, in one sense, it's like in poker. You always play a hand with positive expected return. You don't pick up kings and fold them because, hey, there's a chance, you know, I'll get aces next time. If. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the best way I can explain why I'm always fully invested. As long as I think. I can find companies that I think are undervalued uh, uh, relative to the, uh, at least long-term value potential. I I'll be buying them. I don't care if sentiment is up here. Yeah, it's going to be way harder to find companies that are cheap. And I know, like always, my uh, e even though the story is intact, they're going to take a huge hit when sentiment turns. Because people stop caring about price to value or intact stories. That's true. But down here, it's like here you're playing against the house. Here you are the house. Up here, maybe I, you know, who knows? Maybe 50% of my buys were actually overvalued or fairly valued, etc. Okay, so you take a big hit. Down here, it's like hey, it's almost impossible to be making a mistake. Unless, of course, you pick, you know, total shit calls. But it's like, like I talked about in my post about, you know, b b foolproofing your portfolio. You can, you can buy stuff where m majors have recently taken a stab. So, and just, you know, simple stuff like, hey, uh, this $15 billion company just took an investment in this uh, junior, which looks to have, you know, it's a discovery perhaps already. It's trading at $30 million. Oh, Major X that just took a stab. You know they need kind of, you know, want to see $1 billion plus potential and you're paying $30 million to play the hand. It's not like, whoa, you know, ooh, this is close. I really, this story really needs to work out. No, you can just, you know, I don't know, buy 30, 20 different such stories. It's like, I mean, the chance of success priced in is nothing. If the true chance of success is like 10%, and you have, you know, diversified across 10 to 20 juniors of high risk, high reward nature. I mean, if the payoff is... I don't know, 5 to 20 bags, etc. It's like, you don't even need a big hit rate. It's like, I, I still don't understand why people think that, oh, you know, oh, I'm down in price, I have paper losses, I might be doing something wrong. Or it's like, anytime somebody, I've had a lot of losers. It's like, every time somebody has a loser, it's like, oh, look, look at that moron, you know, that didn't turn out well. But it's like, 
No, but if it had turned out well, which nobody knew because everybody that talks shit typically isn't shorting the stock, but in hindsight, they're like, I mean, I've seen people like, you know, you have a high risk, high reward story, let's say a maiden real program. And uh, I mean, typically, I mean, the odds of making a this major discovery on a maiden real campaign or grassroots expression that's always low that's the thing it's like the reason it's low is that because if they actually do it they can do like a patriot battery medals oh it goes up 50 times oh you actually found the discovery you know great bear found the discovery oh it goes up 20 uh, 20 times i mean if there was a 50 50 percent shot of every company going up 20 times i mean Jesus, everybody would be a billionaire. But it's like, I don't, I, I just don't get it. It's like, if, 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 let's say a company's pricing in a 3% chance of success. And you think, hey, this is probably 10% chance of success at least. So it's 200% undervalued. But that's still 90% chance of failure. And then, and, and let's say things do not turn out well. So you know you bought it cheap. But you know there was a 90% chance of failure and you know a 3%, 97% chance of failure was priced in. <laughs> they don't make <laughs> they don't make the miracle discovery and people say, say like, <laughs> oh, what an idiot, he bought this stock, etc. Like they, you know, like they were smart in any way, shape or form. It's like if you assume it's like, yeah, 90% chance of failure, at least still cheap. Are you smart for predicting a maiden uh, drill play not making a you know significant discovery? No, the odds are against that. That's also why I typically talk about like getting in post discovery plays because hey, last I checked, Great Bear didn't go up twenty times on the discovery hole. It it went up twenty times after the actual discovery hole. You have a much higher chance of getting a 10 bagger after a discovery hole is made than before a discovery hole is made because or let's say the chance of failure is 95 percent yeah but after a discovery hole maybe the uh, uh, the chance of getting a 10 bagger is like 30 percent i would say 30 percent is a lot better than five percent but it's just we do we do so many st stupid uh, things in this market i mean it's not like i'm you know perfect in any sh way shape or form i just learn more and more i used to be all over like pre-discovery place now i'm much more into well almost entirely in post-discovery place etc but it's like i, I yeah to uh, i mean i will try to get some coping it's like i don't give a shit where g price of gold is trading i don't give a shit what people think I can't find many tweets now, but it's like, I don't give a shit what downside target people put on gold. <laughs> the only thing I'm looking at, the only thing that matters to me is, is this. Combined with, well, I, I shouldn't say that. This is just makes it a lot easier to know that you're in a, you know, buy, buy, buy environment. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's price to value I look at. So it's like, I, I know, reg regardless of what actual companies are going to do fundamentally, uh, when the sentiment swing comes, we're going to probably have, you know, the companies that are still around, etc. Uh, 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 I mean, they're, they're going to go up hundreds of percent. Even though they, you know, probably shouldn't. It's it's just what that's what happens in this sector. That's why Lasson calls it the easiest sector in the world. Uh, if if you're never around for uh, the actual mean reversions to the upside, of course you can't afford any mean reversions to the downside. I mean, I I, I have I have no idea. I mean, literally since like Pierre Lasson says, this is the cheap. Uh, it, easy sector in the world and it's like yeah when you look at this short it's like yeah of course i mean it literally it's like ping playing pong it goes up and down up and down but of course that's too simple for everyone 
and people cannot believe that's like this can't be a good buy if it went lower I need to know exactly somebody wake me up when when the bottom is in never gonna happen you're more likely to sell than buy a bottom anyway because a bottom always feels bottomless but it's just when you think about it, it's like it's it's so I mean it's so obvious it's like every time we get into this environment here, it's like, yeah, that's not the time to be in beta place, etc. But down here, it's like, hey, hoover up everything you can because we're going here. Uh, again, just using Bear Creek as a proxy. So it's like, I'm figuring things out. It's like, okay, what? how can I be productive while I'm waiting for this inevitable move to happen? Get in shape. Get in shape. I walk like... Uh, yeah, this tape from yesterday, I think. But it's like, yeah, I walked like 12 kilometers, 9.4, 12.2, 8.3. I'm getting in shape. That is a much better, that's time better spent. I, I'd rather, you know, when we get up here, which we, we will, uh, I'd rather be in the best shape of my life than, than looking at the tickers every day. Because I'm going insane just looking at how people... I mean, there, there's so many people who I know don't have any good long-term results in, in this sector. Typically, they bought in here. And they're telling people how this sector sucks and that how you should play this sector. And it's no point. I mean, people say so much stuff without having any sort of understanding how you act that this i mean they don't even grasp that it's like there will always be a mean reversion now they literally believe that this downtrend is gonna continue forever so it just drives me crazy just seeing all of that there's like hey i can't just sit around and you know <laughs> you know that memes like well somebody's wrong on the internet uh so I okay, I might as well be productive. If I know there's like we're hundreds of percent away from in my, in my average junior, unless something changes, unless news is out, which happens maybe once every month, and it's gonna happen more th th when the drilling season st kicks uh, starts off, which is soon. But still, value changes when news release news releases are out. And right now, for all I know, I think the average junior I own should be up 200%. The only way to play that is to wait. Because I can't force it up 200%. I can't look at the stock and it goes up. So I know that the only way to play a mean reversion is to wait for it to happen. Waiting is the only thing. Sector has sucked. Uh, sucks most of the time. But it... Will it suck? No. From these levels, the, the, the future is the brightest. So I know by definition, okay, the big move is up. The next big move is up. All I need to do is be on board. And I can't actively make, make it go higher. I can only wait. What other things can I do while I wait? Getting pissed off about the market, getting p follow paper, gold and silver, which is irrelevant in the grand, you know, bigger scheme of things. No, so it's like get in shape, read a book, do due diligence, things that actually count and is productive. Bitching and whining about the this sector is absolutely worthless. reading up on investing i mean if you literally grasp how simple this sector is when you i mean when you when you understand how much how much sentiment drives this sector you will a know what to do at every low it will be beyond obvious it will not even be as like uh, i'm not unsure maybe a hold maybe a sell maybe no it will be beyond obvious and you know that the only thing the only way left uh, the only thing left to do is to wait for the mean reversion to happen that frees up a lot of time 
right now or today I think I've looked at two stocks tickers I typically on any given daily I, I pretty much have no idea what the portfolio is doing because it, it's it's so ir irrelevant what do I care what happens down here I know I, <laughs> I have a pretty good idea you know what's gonna have happened in, in you know within whatever it's like a, a year or two we're not here. If I'm going to sell out on my mining mining portfolio, it's going to be around these levels. Unless I need, you know, really need the money, of course. But it's just, yeah, th there's nothing left to do. So I'm taking advantage of the simple fact that, hey, this is an absolute no-brainer. Anytime I'm getting money, I'm buying the cheapest stock I can find on any given day. Then I'm just waiting. Like I waited from every single bottom previously. And lo and behold, one day they were expensive. And maybe they're going to be very expensive. But it's like, I would not want to waste. I mean, Im imagine looking at the tickers every day. Waiting for this to play out. Let's say you're, you're I don't know. Let's, okay, I don't want to be harsh, but let's say you're fat and miserable, but you do understand that this is a, you know, uh, a cyclical sector which is near its, uh, you know, multi-year lows. That's, that's like a buy by, by definition because a mean reversion always happens. Uh, why, why get frustrated by every daily movement? Believe me, everybody's batshit crazy who are bearish on the junior sector right now. And I know it, how it's going to be. If it uh, keeps on going down, they're going to think they were really smart. But it's the same people that sell and don't buy every low. Because they're going to feel smart. And one day the bottom will be in. They won't know it. And when they figured out that it is the bottom, maybe it'll be up here already. I mean, just look at this move here. Zoom. People might not even have time to react. I don't play that game. I'm gonna be I'm, on average. I'm gonna be I'm like, making a lot of money. My when I put money to work, anytime I have free uh, dry powder right now, I assume it's like two, three hundred percent expected value upside. I cannot walk away from that in hopes that I'll get a four hundred percent buy. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I guess the takeaway is absolutely almost everything you see is noise. If a company is cheap, it's cheap. That's that's it. It's not cheap or expensive depending on what the Fed does. At these levels, I don't know how much gold could go down for a gold unit to still be cheap on a long long term basis. So it's like. There is nothing out there that can ma make really a high quality junior not cheap. There is no headline typically except company news that can change that picture. Or yes, if Canada went out and say we're national nationalizing every single mine. Of course that would be affecting every Canadian mine or project. But out, outside of that, there's nothing I can see that's like, would suddenly make a high quality junior expensive or a sell. So there's not really much to do except doing, being productive. Like, I don't know, again, getting in shape, reading up on investing, doing due diligence, figuring out what company is actually cheaper than the other. That's all I'm looking at right now. I see... A large amount of buys, several absolute no-brainers, then it's a question, okay, which is more no-brainer than the others? I have no problem finding a buy right now. That's why I'm incapable of having uh, any sort of dry powder uh, when we're this low. Because there are so many 
I mean, if, if we're up here and you literally can only find one company that you think is cheap based on its you know long-term potential, yeah, it's going to be hard to be all in on that stock. So it's like, in that case, I guess I could have, I don't know, 50% in that stock and 50% cash or whatever. But I, I would also point out, it's like, there's companies that are higher today than here. Great Bear is, you know, equivalence of up here or something. It's just that now when we're this cheap in the sector, it's like th there's a lot of stuff that's cheap. Up here, there's very few things that are cheap. There are going to be higher priced in the next two years. From here, I think there's a bunch of companies that are going to be higher priced. So do things. I mean, literally do anything I would say to keep you in the game because this is not about being rational anymore when we're we've gone this low for this amount of period of time th this is all psychology now because it's obviously beyond obvious what you should be doing and if anybody has heard the phrase buy low uh, sell high everybody would be buying now but it's not that it's not that that's not the reason why people always lose uh, typically lose money in in the sector especially volatile it's just that they can't go through with it it's like everybody knows how to get in shape work out eat less calories than you actually you know expend but there's a tiny tiny amount of people who actually can do it so everybody knows how to get in shape it's just very hard to follow through because it takes discipline, it takes mental fortitude. That's exact, exactly the same thing in investing. Anybody who can understand how a cyclical and sentiment-driven market or sector works should be able to easily spot that this is like no-brainer buying opportunity. Not, not, not a, any confusion at all. Don't care about any macro th stuff. It's like, yep. Absolute no-brainer. I can read a short. I see we, we're almost never at these kinds of levels. Still, almost nobody has the mental fortitude, the discipline to uh, actually buy because so many people have sold and to actually hold and wait. Patience, discipline, common sense, etc. Same thing again. You can take anything like getting in shape or learning a language. It's not like people don't know how to learn a language or getting get in shape or build a, I don't know, house, I was going to say. It's just that nobody has uh, the fortitude to actually do it. So, I mean, I, I personally, I get motivated when people say how hard this sector is. It just wants to... Wants I want to beat it even more because I want to prove to myself that I can do what others cannot. That's why at the same time I'm so incredibly bored right now because it's like, Jesus, can it be more obvious what to do? It's like, make it, you know, <laughs> the sector is so, uh, well, the marginal investor is so irrational right now that it's like, you know, it's getting too easy. It's like, Jesus, I, I can make it so simple to make a case for a high quality junior right now. It's like it's selling for this price and, you know, 5% chance of success is priced in or 3% and it's easily 15 or something. I mean, it's so easy to find a buy right now. So it's boring. But again, that's that's not what the hard part is. Again, that now it's staying power. It's all psychological right now. And I want to prove to myself, and especially when people say how sucky this sector is, how you cannot make money in this sector, I just want to continuously prove those people wrong and show to myself that, hey, you are able to beat the sector that almost nobody says you can beat because almost nobody have the mental fortitude to actually do what is right at a time when it should be beyond the obvious what is right to do. If you if you want to go if you want to lose weight, it's pretty obvious you should probably not buy that uh, you know buy 10 chocolate bars or whatever. 
but but it's it's so good to buy those chocolate bars because it would, it's gonna feel so nice. That's exactly what's happening now, just the opposite. Um, yeah, I hope some of this made sense. Uh, if I mention any companies, assume I'm sponsored by them, assume I own them, assume I'm biased. Uh, but if anyone has any suggestions about, you know, good hobbies or, or basically things to do, except watching the market when it's so obvious that what to do and the only thing after you've done that is just wait for months or a uh, you know couple of years so it's like we have a we have a lot of time to kill we have a lot of time to kill and i'd rather be productive i i'd rather come up uh, you know when we're up here i'd rather be in shape learned another language uh, done a few trips whatever instead of being here and the only thing i've done when i had all the time in the world, I would, you know, ah, I got fat and, and lazy and whatever. No, this is the best part about value investing and, uh, you know, catching this long-term mean reversion. It's like it frees up a lot of time. Because if, you, if you're a day trader, there's no such thing as vacation. If you're not trading, the money's not working. My money is working every day because I invested it in companies and the management teams are creating value. They're, they're clocking in every day and I'm benefiting from that value creation. If I give them one year to create value and I hold the stock for that period of time, my stock will be worth more. If I give them two years, they will have created even more value. So there's nothing else to do than to hodl really. And in day trading you have to trade every single day. It's like playing poker. There's no such thing as passive playing. You had to be concentrated at all times. If you're not playing poker you are not making money. That's why I don't miss poker at all. It was much harder than the markets. You had to be active all the time. You had to be concentrated in every hand, on every street. And you never got no-brainers like this. Yeah, I mean, if you got aces and somebody goes all in, you know, of course you know what to do, etc. And kings, uh, etc. Et that, that rarely happens. Now there's just, you know, aces, you know, spilling all over the table, basically. And it's just, the only thing I can do is pick them up. And the only way to play them is to wait. I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, thanks for listening. Bye.